By the 1870s, the immigrants were stepping ashore on American soil at a rate of over 7,000 every day. The journey across the Atlantic had taken anything from 12 days to three weeks, and most of them traveled in conditions that varied from bad to appalling. Many of the bigger ships were designed with only one thing in mind, to carry as many immigrants as possible. And so they came, in filth and degradation, packed in like cattle, treated much the same. The vast majority came to New York, at first to the immigration depot at Castle Garden, and then later here, to the place that was to become a symbol both of everything that America offered and the terrible fear that at the very gates of freedom they would be turned away, here at Ellis Island. It took only a few hours to be accepted or rejected, and much of that time was spent confused and bewildered, waiting, clutching their cardboard suitcases tied up with string, everything they possessed. Some of them, those who could write, even left their names on the walls, as if to say, look, I made it. And then came the moment of truth, the point at which they either passed or failed the test to become American. What none of them could have known was how easy that test was. A quick look at the eyes, the hands, and the throat, and then the writing down of their particular details. The point at which many of them lost their old names because the inspectors couldn't spell them and they couldn't write them. So they became Smith, Brown, Jones. Eight out of 10 people passed the test but with one inspector handling 500 people a day, it was almost a case of, if you could walk, you were in. In the 30 years between 1850 and 1880, nearly 8 million people got in. And as the country grew and the frontiers pushed west, the immigrants were swallowed up to disappear in the vast open spaces of this enormous country. The trouble was, every 10 years, the government had to find them all again for the national census. And as the population soared, the paperwork for doing that became unbelievable. And then in 1880, an army surgeon called John Shaw Billings, who was working on the census, was watching the mountains of paperwork being shuffled when he happened to mention to his young engineer assistant that he reckoned that the jacquard cards with their punched holes ought to be able to carry information. You know, if a man was married, you'd punch a hole, and if he wasn't, you wouldn't. The young engineer, Herman Hollerith, worked on the idea and came up with this. It's called a tabulator, and it works on cards like these, the size of a dollar bill of the period. Now, Hollerith chose that size because they already had holders for dollar bills, and what that meant was he wouldn't have to design and build one himself. No fool. So, you put the card in here. Now, let's say we're talking about a white male, age 35, who is single, lives in Maine, and came originally from Russia. Right, you punch. White, male, 35, single, the code for the state, Maine, and finally, Russia. Now you take the card out, see the little holes, and put it into this press. Now, when you push this press down, these little needles here with springs on them either go through a hole, or they don't. Remember Jacquard? And if they do go through a hole, they make electrical contact down there. And that triggers these counters up here one click forward. Now, depending on what you want to count, you program the counters. Say you just want a general population figure, then all these are the states and territories, of which that is Maine, and that one in the corner is the grand total. So our man in Maine would add one to Maine, and one to the grand total, like this. And the bell told you you'd done it. Now, the census involved much more detailed analysis than that. So, Hollerith also designed a sorter, this cabinet with lots of boxes in it, connected to the tabulator. Now, let's say you want to take a particular look at all 35-year-old men. What you do is program the tabulator 
so that when one of them comes under the press, it causes a particular box to flip open, like this. And you pop the card into the box, and at the end of the day, you took out all the 35-year-olds and ran them back under the press to see where they all lived and to see how many of them there were. And you could do that with any bit of information on a card or any mixture of bits of information on a card. Well, the 1880 census had taken oh, over seven years to complete. With a new tabulator, the 1890 census was finished in half that time, and they checked the total twice. 62,947,714.